thinking back on it, I don't think George said anything about the Emperor. Um, of course, I immediately got hold of Star Wars, and uh, they invited me to see it and so on. And I, so I, I clued myself in with who I was quite quickly. Um, but I didn't really get any, any information about him, except he was extremely old, and he ran the universe. And this man, Darth Vader, worked for him and uh, did him a lot of good and not much good to anybody else. Then I met Mark uh, Hamill, who told me much more, and uh, we got on very well. And Mark has a, a great sense of humor and was very fond of English humor and English comics at that time. Um, so everything started to relax, and it was, it was great fun to, to work with him. But it was fairly obvious what was going on in terms of the scenes that I had, and I didn't have the full script. I think that very few people had the full script in, in those days. Um, and, I think, and George, of course, then you must remember, was producing. So he didn't really want to come up front and chat. I mean, Richard did a bit of that. And Richard filled me in, I think, as best he could. But I had the impression that Richard didn't know all the facts either, <laughs> though presumably he had a script, if not necessarily the one that the rest of us had. Um, but again, it didn't really matter. The, as I say, the scenes were strong. The situation couldn't have been stronger. and. Uh, and the character was almost given to me by that face. And I spent most of my time subsequent to that walk down on the first day in this large black chair. And I was very old. Um, and, and this voice that suddenly emerged from, from nowhere. Um, I looked at the face and the voice followed. And I didn't think anyone had been paying particular attention to the voice. Uh, but one day, one day Richard came up to me. One day, I mean, we weren't doing this for very long. And he said to me, now look, um, I'm going to give you a tape of Clive Revel's voice. And Clive Revel did the voice of the emperor in the previous movie. And if you can get sort of close to it, uh, George might be happy to let you keep your voice. And I had no idea that I wouldn't be using my voice. And I thought, oh. So I listened to Clive Revel, and I thought, well, that's, that's fine. But I, having seen that makeup, which Clive never had the, had the privilege of doing or being in, I think the voice shouldn't be like that. It should be something deeper, you know, more sepulchral, uh, more horrible. Um, so I did a bit of that, and Richard said, yes, well, that's good. You've been doing that voice, I see, throughout. Um, and George actually is quite taken with it. So just go on doing it, the time being. So I went on doing it. And then when we came to looping very much later, uh, most of the film was redubbed because of for technical reasons in those days, uh, if not all of it, and certainly all of my part was. So I had a chance to think about it and refine it, and George had said, I really like what you're doing, I like that voice, let's work on it, work with it, and stick with it. Um, so the emperor sort of arrived by that, by that strange process.